Hey y'all, hey, how you doing? It's your girl Ginger Snaps. Listen, all right, happy Easter, first of all. Um, and second of all, let's let's discuss this whole J Lo gate um that's going on on uh TikTok. I found it on TikTok. So our um Boricua sister J Lo, I guess she was on um was it Vanity Fair? I don't know, some article they were she was being interviewed. So they asked her what is her go-to order from a bodega? And I don't know if you, if you guys know, my people who are not from the um, New York tri-state area, that's New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, which I am from, a bodega is like a little Latin, Latino store, which they sell various, you know, wares, they sell snacks, cigarettes, um, food, drinks, you know, they, they just sell a variety of things, lotto tickets, um, things of that nature. And also they sell like beer too. I remember when I was younger, my uncle used to send me to the bodega to go buy him like a pack of Newports or like a beer. This was back in the day. Now that would not fly. But anyways, and also Haitians too, we have something similar to a bodega. It's called Mashe. And those are the, sh the stores. They're, they're independent stores, your little mom and pop shops. They're not like chain grocery stores like your shop, right? And stop and shop. These are stores that are, um, that are basically like cultural stores. Um, so I just remember whenever my mom would, you know, make her usual grocery rounds to the big chain stores and then whatever she could not find in those stores, you always went to a bodega or, a, um, a mashe, um, to find these stores because in America, they, you know, it's a land of immigrants. We often cannot find the things that we need, our cultural needs in American stores. So I remember we used to go to the Bronx to go buy meat, you know, at, um, I forgot the term that they used to call like the meat places, um, vivero, viv, viveri, vivero, whatever. They used to chop, like actually chop the chicken up fresh. They kill it first and then they, um, chop them up. And also like certain, um, certain cooking items like cooking pans, castuol, um, like the Dutch ovens. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Like those Dutch oven pots that they never used to sell here. You can only find them in bodegas or mashes because they would import them. Certain um, herbs like um, asosi, that was a particular tea that we used to drink. Our parents gave it to us when we were sick. I forgot what it's called. Um, and also like I'm just thinking like John John, that's something that Haitians use to make rice. Um, the black rice. If, if, if you know, you know what John John is. One of the best ingredients is basically dried black mushrooms. You find it in Haiti only, and we make black rice with it. So things like that, we only found in, um, in like bodegas and mushes. It wasn't up until maybe like recent. I'm going back maybe within the last 15, 20 years. Now we're able to find some of the, some of these items in actual American supermarkets. Um, you know, they'll have like the international section. And I often find like freaking scotch bonnet sauce. I will find sometimes John John if I'm lucky. Um, you know, in certain supermarkets, I, I also use, um, what's that cleaning that a lot of like, Hispanics and Caribbean people use to clean their house. Oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. But anyways, um, e like even certain parts of, of stop and shop, I'll only find it at certain stop and shops. You will not find some of these items in all stop and shops. It depends on the area. So that's why sometimes I have to go to like hood areas and I will go to get the um, items that I need many times. So anywho, JLo was asked the question, what is her go-to order when she goes to the bodega? Now, if you know, you know, everybody has a specific order, um, a specific item that they always order. They're staple items. I had my staple items that I order when I go to the bodega. So here's JLo. And what was your go-to order at the bodega? My go-to order at the bodega was ham and cheese on a roll, 
with an orange drink, if you know, you know, and a small bag of chips. Okay. All right. Y'all heard that. A lot of people on TikTok, they were confused by her order. Okay. I was confused too. Cause she said what ham and cheese on a roll. And I was like, um, you know, I was like, eh, it sounds kind of plain, right? It sounded really plain to me. I was like, that's it. And then when she said orange drink, in my mind, orange drink is bar the barrel juice. Y'all remember them barrel juice? They, they cost 25 cents. Okay. And then when she said chips, listen, it could be any chips. Everybody has their go-to chip. Mine was the vinegar chip. Um, if I was feeling fancy, I would get Funyuns. And also my go-to sandwich was bacon, egg and cheese, um, on a hard roll with salt and pepper and ketchup. That's it. That's it. Lightly toasted bread and that greasy, you know, on that parchment paper that those are the best sandwiches even till now in my at my big professional age nothing hits quite like a big egg and cheese with salt and pepper and ketchup with um some salt and vinegar chips and um i don't i don't drink the barrel juice anymore because those are so bad for you i remember drinking some of those drinks it would leave like a weird tangy aftertaste i can't describe it but those, those juices are basically just sugar water with a little bit of like, you know, taste that's adjacent to the fruit it was trying to emulate. You know, they were so bad, but listen, we drank those when we were younger. I mean, we, we all drank them. I don't allow my kids to drink those. My kids, they always beg me to make Kool-Aid for them. I don't think if they've had Kool-Aid, it wasn't with me. Um, so I don't let them drink those. Like if they were to see or come across a barrel drink, they'd be like, I don't, we, I don't know what this is <laughs> because it's so bad for you with the yellow five and all those dyes and, and flavoring agents. It's terrible. Anyhow, you know, I'm getting long winded. Let's get back to JLo. So now JLo, what you guys don't understand, what many people do understand, don't, don't understand many of the Gen Z and what is this new Gen Alpha do not understand, right? Is that JLo, yes, is from the Bronx. Um, I think she is from the hood. Okay. But as her career has gone on, people have questioned, um, her, I guess, commitment to being from the Bronx, right? Um, JLo, she came out with that song. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. She made that song because people were questioning her hoodness. I think especially after, you know, oh, this, this is funny because after she dated Diddy, remember that she dated Diddy. And I remember that was a whole thing. Okay. They were up in the club. And, um, I think what made them break up is when the sh pew pew happened, which sh the rapper shine took the rap for, um, for Diddy, which he allegedly is the one that pew pewed somebody. And you guys can go search. I'm not even going to go into that. You guys can go search all around that. Well, JLo was not a down ass bitch at that time. And she broke up with him. She allegedly carried the pew pew into the club for him. But after that, she fled Karen mode. That's how it was perceived that she's not down for her man. And she fled right into the arms of Ben Affleck. Okay. Who is her now husband? Okay. So since then people are like, Oh, not they're questioning, you know, her hoodness or her devotion to being from the Bronx. She went Hollywood. So that's why now people are giving her such flack for her quote unquote bodega order. They're saying that it's not an authentic bodega order, which my eyebrow did raise because when she said what ham and cheese on a roll, I'm like, that's it. So in my mind, I'm imagining just a slab of ham, just a slice of cheese on a roll. No, when you go to a bodega or a masha in order, you need to be detailed. Everybody likes their sandwich to a, a particular liking and hers just seemed very plain. Um, and, and that's adding to, you know, people's, um, disdain for JLo. I think people have long, long, like 
just not seen it for J-Lo. Um, case, another case in point, Jamie Foxx. So a lot of you don't know, J-Lo was a fly girl on In Living Color. In Living Color was a sketch comedy show. It was like a SNL, but it was for black people. It was um, created by the Wayans brothers. Okay. Very funny comedic family. JLo was just a mere fly girl. The fly girls would come and dance right before it went to commercial break. The fly girls would come out and dance and they had like the, those tight biker, um, pants on and, um, you know, like these jackets. I remember they were like these bomber leather jackets, if I remember correctly. And so Jamie Foxx was on that show too. He was one of the breakout stars on In Living Color. Also Jim Carrey, um, and countless of other people. And Jamie Foxx said he ran into JLo later, years later, when she, you know, after she had done movies, like she had done Selena, which was a smash to me. She had also done um, Enough. I remember she did the movie Enough. She did a lot of movies, right? Very whitewashed movies. And then Jamie Foxx, he tried to go up and say hi to her, and she acted like she didn't know who he was, okay? She did not know who he was or she was acting brand new. She was acting bougie. Okay. She was acting whitewashed. So people have, I think, kept that in the back of their minds. Okay. Also, she had broken up with Diddy as well, went to Ben Affleck, turned Hollywood. And another thing, another clue that made me realize people were, they were not checking for JLo anymore is when she came out with the song, I'm real with, um, with Ja Rule. Now, if you remember Ja Rule, um, that's the song where he's like, what's my mother effing name? And she goes, are you Ellie? Listen, for years, I thought she asked, are you early? <laughs> and it wasn't just me. We all thought she was saying something else, but she actually was spelling out rule. Are you Ellie? I had no clue, but you know what? That was my teenage brain. You know, my frontal lobe was not um, developed at that point. So anyways, there is a line in that song where she says, um, they say, what's the name? And they name and you and so and so. I tell them niggas, mind they biz, but they don't hear me though. See, J-Lo said, I tell them niggas, mind they biz, but they don't hear me though. She got a lot of backlash for that a lot of backlash because, and I don't remember if that song came out before or after she dealt with Diddy, but I remember even then, 2000, 2001, early 2000s, people are like, you are Puerto Rican. You should not be saying the N word. But then again, you have Fat Joe, listen, saying the N word anytime he gets, anytime he can. Cardi B out here, anytime they can, they spewing the N word. Why couldn't JLo say it? And I remember too, because she went Hollywood. She's not, she's not that same from the Bronx girl. So that's why this whole backlash is happening. They're questioning her hoodness. They're questioning her Bronxness, I guess, her New Yorkness. And a lot of people on TikTok are asking their parents, see, we forget people, my generation, us millennials, we forget JLo is not our age. JLo is a good Gen X. She's closer to boomer age. I, I, how old is JLo? JLo has to be born in the 60s, okay? My mother was born in the 60s. So JLo is in between boomer and Gen X age. She grew up in a different time, okay? I don't know how bodegas were fashioned when JLo was coming up, or I don't even think they had ma Haitian mashes, okay? You had, you had a different influx of people from the Caribbean between the 50s and 60s and between the late 70s, early 80s. You had more affluent um, Caribbean people, the Cubans. The Cubans that were against, you know, socialism and, um, Who's a, who was a Cuban uh, dictator? Damn, I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, you had a lot of those affluent um, Cubans who were against the dictatorship. So they had means to flee in, in the early 50s and, and, and the 60s. Same thing with Haiti. It was more affluent people, people who were able to that fled 
during the 60s, you know, um, early 60s, early 70s, they were able to come here. We did not have these establishments of bodegas at those times yet, okay? I think bodegas became a thing maybe around the mid 70s into 80s, it started developing. Then you had more of an influx of, um, I don't wanna call them peasant folk, but more of the common, common folk. Um, not the upper crust, the elite of the Caribbean countries. You had the regular folk. So with an increased population of Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Haitians, Jamaicans, then you'll have more, you know, bodegas and, and these Caribbean spots pop up. So, you know, I just looked up, JLo was born in 69. So she was probably frequenting these these bodegas and stuff probably around late 70s early 80s maybe the bodega of her time are not the bodegas of us like me like our, the millennial times okay i think they were probably more simpler then because they were just being established okay i don't think back then they were fancy with the chopped cheese and the let me get a bacon egg and cheese and all that you know they could have been more simpler maybe the concept of um offering like these detailed sandwiches maybe it wasn't a thing for her back then so now on TikTok, you have a lot of people you know getting on her but i'm noticing they're younger people so but i'm seeing the older people they're understanding what she's saying um yeah let me just get a bag of chips and someone was asking their parents what was a bag of chips they said yeah it could have been lays maybe back then it was only maybe doritos and, you know, and Lay's, you know, the regular kind, maybe when they said orange drink, maybe it was just, you know, like the barrel juice that maybe at their time, they knew what she was saying because there probably wasn't a huge selection. Maybe a ham and cheese was just a universal ham and cheese to everyone in JLo's time. She didn't have the chopped cheese at her time. Chopped cheese to me is probably within the last 10, 15, 20 years. You know, bacon, egg and cheese was always a thing for me. I'm an 80s baby. Um, so, and also when you say uh, drink, or I always knew the barrel juice, but I also knew they had Tampico. They had, especially as a Haitian, cola lakai. If you say cola lakai, we know, you know, we everybody knows what cola lakai is. Everybody knows what cola champagne is. Everybody knows um, for Jamaicans, you go to, to, um, the, the Jamaican, you go to the green bottle. You, if you want a green bottle drink, ting. It's ting or you got that coconut soda. So you, we have more of a variety now. Now there's all different kinds of chips in the bodegas and the mashes. Back then, I don't think there was a huge selection. When I was coming up, I remember it was regular Lay's, Doritos was number one, uh, salt and vinegar was the other one, Funyuns, I remember came later. Then if you wanna get really fancy, we had those barbecue twister, I forgot what brand it is. It was like these curly Q twisty kind of chips. I remember those. So I understand what J-Lo is talking about. I, like I can understand, even though I was confused, but when I heard her plain order of ham and cheese, I said, okay, maybe it's, it's you know, when around her time, because J-Lo is a good 15, 14 years older than me, all right? Let me put some videos so y'all could see how people are straight dissing J-Lo and I think it's because she has you know departed from her her cultural roots from the Bronx you know roots she went Hollywood she got too big for her britches she fancy now she a white woman that's how it's perceived and a lot of times in our culture Hispanic and black culture if you think you are too grand um people will then start to um you know, they'll start to dismiss you and villainize you. And I think that's what's happened to, to J-Lo. Y'all, orange drink has entered the chat. It took somebody in their 40s to unlock this memory for me. Oh my God. When J-Lo said orange drink, she was talking about quarter waters. Oh my God. That's the orange drink. Yo, I haven't had... Man, that completely left my mind because quarter waters... The last time I had a quarter water, I was like, what, in pre-kindergarten? Yo, damn, J-Lo. <laughs> 
you really showing your age. Because <laughs> if you was talking about the quarter orders, that's crazy. <laughs> to be in your 50s and say that that will be your go-to drink. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody in the past 30 years <laughs> thinking about quarter orders. But yo, what 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 was the other drinks that we used to have? There was a drink with the little um 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 the little fat boy with the backwards baseball cap. Hold up, gotta go Chubbies! But yo, I don't even remember him looking like that. I remember wait, hold up. Wasn't there a drink with like a little boy with the sunglasses and his arm was crossed with the backwards baseball cap? I don't remember him being this happy. I remember him looking kind of cool. Yo, y'all let me know. Yo, y'all remember squeeze it and how kids were like choking on these little plastic caps and mandos? Wow. Good times. Good times. Oh, man. Let me tell you one thing. Uh, you can't be from the Bronx with that. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I don't even respect. I'm still Jenny from the block anymore because I don't know what block you was on where you think a ham sandwich. And our orange drink, you talking about if we know, we know. We don't know anything. It's mad orange drinks. That doesn't make sense. So we don't know that. And to say that what else a New York New Yorker says is fuck you is crazy. Because everybody says that. What about your, what about, come on, it's mad shit that we say as New York people. What the fuck are you talking about, J-Lo? What are you talking about? Like, for real. Like, it's, this, is, this is crazy. The bodega. Everyone is so pressed about JLo's bodega order, so I figured I'm going to show what my bodega order was. This right here is my orange drink. And the reason why I didn't choose these two because they tasted so fake. The orange drink tasted more like a high C, and all you have to do is pop the little top over it and go <laughs> sip it up. People were making fun of JLo because they were like, who the hell orders a ham and cheese on a roll? It was a bacon, egg, and cheese. Uh-uh. I beg to differ because I never ordered that shit. I used to order ham and cheese on a roll, shredded lettuce, because that's how they used to do the lettuce, at least where I grew up in Spanish Harlem, and they used to put salt, pepper, oil, and vinegar. And I think that's what made it the ham and cheese on a roll. Let me know if it was different for you. My chips was Lay's Classic or Doritos Nacho Cheese. But let's talk about dessert because this right here, if you know, you mother effing know, butter crunch. And that's how I'm going to leave it. Everyone is so if you know, you know. Your bodega order as a real New Yorker, a real New Yorker, can say a lot about like who you are. It can also say a lot about like your specific neighborhood. So the fact that all boroughs, excluding Staten Island, don't even fucking know what she's talking about, that is crazy. Here is my theory on the orange drink that she's talking about. Quickly, I'm going to walk you through the ones that are not it. So she would have said orange twist off if it was this orange quarter juice, orange quarter water, if you know, you know, but she didn't. She would have name dropped it if it was Tropical Fantasy. She, everyone knows what this drink is, so it would have been smarter for her to just say that. But I think she was a Tropicana girly. From what I remember, this drink cost more than all the other drinks. And her family had money, so I think she was a Tropicana girly. Oh, my second option was this one for her, but I can't realistically see her ordering this. She is way too bougie for that. It's amazing how much controversy a simple video from JLo has caused. You know, because the thing about New York culture is, you know, people from the tri-state area, especially New York, they do not play about their culture. They really don't. So anything that is said, um, you know, when it's pertaining to music, style, um, culture, um, New York talk, New York slang, New York, you know, even New York transportation, just anything about the boroughs, it's, 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 it's serious. Okay. And if you're, if you are perceived to not be genuine, if you're, if you're not real, okay, New York, New Yorkers will get on you. They don't play. They do not play. You'll see all across TikTok. They even have like quizzes, you know, finish the New York slang and they'll be like bacon, egg in, and you have to say cheese, um, chop cheese, uh, rice and what is, is it rice? And, I don't even know. Rice and cheese. Um, Yo, that's, that's, uh, what's the word? And it's new words. I don't even know. Um, what's, I, I forgot what one word is. Um, like they'll be like, yo, you good? 
And you good can mean five different things. Like you good, that means do you have a problem? Do we have a problem? Or you good? That's a sign of concern. Or you good? Like, okay, what's going on with you? You seem like you're having a mental breakdown. Um <laughs> one, you know, one phrase can mean five different things. Even a phrase is like ak, aki ak. And I think from what I remember, because y'all, I went to school in New York, um, right near the Bronx. We used to be on Fordham Road all the time, White Plains Road. So ak, I think, is it the uh, Middle Eastern dudes that have their own bodega? So now you have Middle Eastern bodegas, which is weird, but they're basically corner stores run by um, Middle Eastern folk and they're making chopped cheese. They're making bacon, egg and cheese. They doing all of that too. You know, so, um, I, you know, I don't know. New York culture is it, it, listen, if you have not experienced living near New York, living in New York, being around New Yorkers, I actually was just in New York yesterday with my kids. I'm always there. It is, it's something else. It's quite the experience. So I think that's why this whole J Lo and TikTok and all these conversations are happening and it, they're going viral because it seems like J-Lo has departed from New York. So how dare you try to come back and speak on New York when you basically left us high and dry? Just like you left Diddy high and dry. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, we, you know, New York has influenced hip hop, influenced, um, style, influenced, you know, fashion and the arts. Um, one of our, one of our most illustrious artists of all time, Jean-Michel Basquiat, who is of Puerto Rican and Haitian descent, hails from New York, I believe Brooklyn. So listen, don't play, don't play with New Yorkers. Do not. Do not, they take everything in their culture seriously. Even though I did live in New York for my four years of college, I don't consider myself a New Yorker. I'm New Yorker adjacent, all right? But I, and I understand the culture. I'm not a New Yorker though. That's why I say theirs. Even though I lived for, for most of my life, I'm born freaking 15 minutes away from New York State, you know? But, um, it is what it is. Let me know what you think. My New Yorkers, my fellow tri-state area people, my fellow, you know, millennials, um, the Gen Xers, let me know what your take on this. What is your go-to bodega order? What do you remember from going to the bodegas as a younger child? You know, I remember the Vivero. It was just a sight to be seen. Everybody's speaking Spanish. Everybody's speaking Creole. And the thing, what's funny is my mom used to talk to Creole to, to the store, the butchers or whatever, and they would speak in Spanish back. Somehow we understood each other. It was the craziest of times. You know, I remember we would go to Hunt's Point. My father still goes to New York to get his car fixed. That's where you get the best of the best deals. My mom, her furniture was from New York in Brooklyn. My parents took us shopping. We were always on Canal Street, always in Chinatown. You know, go fin visit family in Long Island, in Queens. We don't play about New York. It's not my state, but again, it still is. It holds a special place in my heart. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, let's have a conversation. All right? Are you Ellie?